I started out in the field of mechanical engineering where I was building large structures like satellites. But what truly inspired me was becoming an engineer of the body. I'm Trina Livingston Arenze. I am a professor in biomedical engineering here at New Jersey Institute of Technology. My research is in the area of developing biomaterials to repair damage and diseased tissues. So we've been primarily working in the area of orthopedics, so this would be bone and cartilage repair, and then also neural repair. For over a decade, we've been designing scaffolds, structures that provide cues to cells, similar to scaffolds that you see on the side of a building. Workers are using them to help build these very sophisticated buildings. Uh, we use that same analogy here with these scaffolds and that we are building these very sophisticated tissues. These scaffolds are highly interactive. It not only helps support the cells, uh, but it also stimulates them to grow and to function in a certain way. So we use a combination of biology, chemistry, architectural design to facilitate the cells to, to form these tissues. In the areas of bone, this would be for very large bone defects that would not normally repair. The current way of treating these defects is the use of bone grafts, and these unfortunately do not repair well. So we are developing synthetic biomaterials or scaffolds that actually release these calcium phosphate, these ions that help stimulate the cells to start building bone tissue. In the era of cartilage, there is no technology that actually repairs cartilage tissue. It will eventually degrade and actually lead to severe osteoarthritis. For cartilage, we create these fibrous scaffolds and what we're trying to do is mimic what's naturally in the cartilage tissue. We have developed these scaffolds and have implanted them and have shown that we are able to get robust cartilage tissue formation and it's functional cartilage tissue and that it mechanically can withstand these loads when patients are walking or running. Electrospinning is a process that we use to create these scaffolds. So electrospinning forms these fibers and we apply a very high voltage to the material as it's being ejected out of this uh, syringe. And so the high voltage helps the fiber to form and then those fibers then collect on this plate as you see here. What you're left with then is this highly fibrous scaffolding structure, very porous, so that cells can attach as well as grow into and form tissue. When there's an injury to the spinal cord, usually that's a traumatic injury, um, there's you know a large, relatively large gap that's left there in that neural tissue in the spine. What happens is scar tissue will eventually form there. And so our technology is to try to eliminate that scar and then uh, promote the formation of these, these nerves across that defect site. We are trying to stimulate those axons to cross that gap and reform the connections between the brain and the rest of the body. We are getting some very promising results in a laboratory environment. And so we are excited about developing technologies that will actually help patients begin to walk again. We will create these technologies, but I'm always interacting with the clinicians, so the orthopedic surgeon, the neurosurgeon, um, understanding what is the real cl clinical problem that we're trying to tackle. Do we have the correct designs? You know, what do the patients really need? How can that surgeon actually work with our materials at the time of surgery? My research has evolved over the, the years, and I think my collaborations had a, a huge influence on where it is today. I've had the opportunity to work with um, a tremendous number of undergraduates, graduate students, 
NGIT has allowed me to collaborate with a number of investigators here, not only in the, this biomedical field, but also the mechanical engineers, the chemical engineers, electrical engineers, so you can have a, a clear understanding of how the technology should be developed and can be improved.